Hey guys, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. It's Rick and I'm back with another CPU cooler review. Really quick, I just want to say I know I've been absent with reviews for the last two weeks. Sorry about that guys, but I got a really bad bug, bug cut my voice completely out, and uh, basically I wasn't able to make any content for the last two weeks. I've been working on it behind the scenes, but I wasn't able to record anything for you guys. So thank you for all of you guys that stuck in there and we're gonna continue on with our CPU cooler reviews today. And getting to that, today what we're gonna be reviewing is the Rygen Tech Eidos, which is a, a very interesting tower cooler here in North America, simply because we don't see Eidos, we don't see Rygen Tech products a lot yet. They're sort of new to the North American market. However, they are more established in Asia and in Europe. So before we go any further, let's take an overview as usual of what the Rygentech Eidos is offering us. So overall, the design is a four copper heat pipe design. There are six millimeter heat pipes, and it comes obviously as usual with an aluminum heat sink uh, fin stack. This time around on this cooler, uh, we're going to have a 92 millimeter fan, which is PWM uh, controlled, and it has a max RPM of 2200 RPM. Uh, overall, the dimensions on the cooler are 136 millimeters high by 95 millimeters wide and 55 millimeters deep. Um, there is no official TDP rating by Rygentech, but uh, I would place it somewhere between the 125 to 150 watt uh, range for the standardized TDP. Doesn't mean you can't go higher than that, but this is probably where the cooler would, would fall if the manufacturer did publish a rating on it. And uh, theoretically, the cooler is supposed to be uh, compatible all the way up to AM4, so all modern CPUs all the way up to uh, Ryzen and the AM4 platform. But we are gonna be getting to that in uh, this video because there is a small issue that is important for you guys to know. So getting back to uh, the cooler at hand. Um, before we move on with the performance numbers, couple as usual, there's a couple of points I wanna point out on this cooler that it, it's important that you know before purchasing it. Number one, this is another one of those coolers that you can only install in one direction. And if you are using AM4, unfortunately, it's a top to bottom design and not a horizontal uh, cooler installation. What that means is that depending on the airflow you have in your case, you're actually maybe limited to a top to bottom design, so you have to ideally have some kind of exhaust at the top. Doesn't mean it's not gonna be working in a case with regular airflow, but unfortunately it's not one of those coolers where you can actually decide on the orientation of the cooler. And with the basic AMD installation, it'll always be in a top to bottom sense. Um, another issue that I came around is that the mounting design for the fan to the heatsink is actually, in my opinion, a little bit too complex on this design. It's, it's not awful, it's just one of the worst designs I've seen for mounting a fan, one of the most difficult designs for mounting a fan to a heatsink. Um, I invite you guys, if you're gonna buy this cooler, look at the instructions online. You can get a PDF version before and see what it is you have to do, but mounting the metal bracket to, around the heatsink is actually really difficult on this fan. Uh, it took a lot of time and uh, you have to really be careful because you'll bend sometimes some of the fins on the aluminum stack. You can straighten them up again pretty easy, but the mounting system is so difficult that it's really hard to ha not have that happen at all during the mounting process. So something to keep in mind. Now, there's one final issue because I didn't mention the AM4. We're gonna get that to at the end. Before we mention that, because it's more part of the conclusion and you know how whether I can for the moment recommend this fan or not, let's look at the performance numbers so that we get an idea of where it falls in the stack. So um, starting with the temperature uh, results, this fan had a uh, basic delta temperature. Just before that, let's get let's look at really quickly you know the methodology as usual. So all my coolers are tested on my Ryzen 3 test bench, which is an open air test bench. Uh, it's overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz and I'm using 1.3 volts to hit that, uh, that, that setting. 
And for the sound tests, I basically use my portable sound meter, which is situated about a foot to a foot and a half away from uh, basically the front of the cooler. And I am registering whatever is the highest, the highest sound I get for, let's say, a two minute period in a quiet room with, you know, no other ambient noise other than regular ambient. Um, so that is the, uh, you know, how I get my numbers and how we know that all the coolers are compared on the exact same footing. So, yeah, getting back to the performance for heat performance so we were at 28 delta delta c above ambient so this is 28 degrees above the ambient temperature of the room uh, setting the cooler um, among some of the better ones but not the best so a couple of degrees above the gamax one or two degrees above the hyper 212 so it's okay performance it's decent performance it's sticking in there with the best of them but it doesn't it hasn't unseated any of the best coolers so far. Um, so, and when we move on to the noise now, now if we look at the noise, um, once again, somewhere in the middle, it's a 46 decibel uh, audible noise off of the fan, which situates it once again, not among the best, not among the worst, somewhere in the middle. So overall, both temperature wise and sound wise, it's a mid ranged fan. And that will bring us today to our conclusion. Now, when I mentioned earlier that this is AM4 compatible, if you go on Raijin Tech's website, if you go on most companies that are selling the cooler, they're telling you that right out of the box, it's supposed to be AM4 compatible. And I'm not saying it won't be. The problem is, is that there's still a lot of old stock floating out around there. And as in my case, the first cooler I got was actually lacking the modifications to the mounting system, making it AM4 compatible. So basically, um, I got mine from Newegg. Um, they offered to return it, send me another one. Second one I got still didn't have the bracket for AM4, the modifications to, to the mounting system. So I finally actually ordered from a third party and got reimbursed on the shipping charges for the mounting system and the problem as well is that the mounting system i actually had to go get it in europe because right now in north america i couldn't find anyone selling just the am4 kits for the raijin tech idos and unfortunately i tried contacting raijin tech directly because normally with issues like this you try to go through the manufacturers and from raijin tech directly this is the biggest point that I have to say that really disappointed me about this cooler. The uh, customer service was really awful. I didn't get a reply to two emails. I tried calling on three different occasions and I was calling directly to, tai to tai Taiwan or Taipei. Sorry if I'm, I can't remember which one of the two countries the number was in, but you know, I was calling directly to their head office and I wasn't able to get through to anyone that could actually help me in getting a bracket without having to pay crazy shipping charges from Europe. Like to get the just the AM4 bracket, just to give you an idea, it cost me about 40 bucks Canadian, which makes no sense, especially when the product is supposed to be and from the manufacturer AM4 compatible right out of the box. If you're in Europe, it's not too bad because the AM4 bracket kits are available over there. Uh, the, the kit itself is free and the shipping charges are probably gonna be just a couple of bucks when it's local. But getting it to North America, not very good. And the fact that they don't reply to their emails and that they don't wasn't able to reach any type of customer service with the support numbers was really disappointing on my end. So is the cooler okay? As you see, the performance is mid-ranged, the noise is mid-ranged. The looks have nothing necessarily really special about it. Other than the fact that Raijin Tech makes some red fans, so you can actually get the model with a red fan at the front. So if it fits into a red build, they're one of the only companies that have stock fans that are actually, you know, red without it being an LED design. So if that could be an attraction point for you guys, I mean, you could pick up this cooler. However, I personally am not going to be recommending it just because if you have any type of issues with this, especially with AM4, I mean, if you're on AM3 or Intel, you're not gonna have any issues because no matter which you get, an older stock cooler or the newer stock, 
uh, it's going to be compatible with your system but if you're on am4 i really can't recommend this right now till they fix their stocking problem or either they recall all the non am4 compatible coolers update the brackets ship them back out i don't know what they could you know that's one solution that they could go for or simply make the upgrade kits available for free uh, you know to north america or all everywhere that their coolers are sold or simply like honestly just don't offer the product till you're ready to serve the market you're in if you don't have a north american customer support system set up well maybe you shouldn't be offering your product there yet that's my thoughts but you know as usual uh, the product is okay but I can't recommend it simply because there are options that are just as good out there and you're not going to have these customer service issues if you can't get the if you don't get a compatible cooler so those are that's my thoughts on the Rigentech Eidos unfortunately I was hoping to have more of a positive review on it because Rigentech was a company I was looking forward to review I was actually really excited to get this cooler because I really thought it would stand out from the others. But overall, I think we wound up with a mid-range product with bad customer support and uh, a difficult mounting system. So, you know, take it or leave it. But those are my thoughts on the Ryzen Tech Eidos. Now, as usual, if you guys want to help the channel out directly, the Patreon link is down below. If not, likes and subscribes really help the channel as well so please you know if you haven't already subscribed do subscribe to the channel if not drop me a like a comment i answer as quick as i can any questions i can in the comments so you can leave those down below as well and as usual i'll see you guys in my next video